Titles. Go. Hey, Seb. Heil Bratwurst. The old college try. Geek Pod after dark. The home of big butts. <laughs> the disease is spreading. And I'm frozen. Hot boxed. <laughs> hey, that's Jax. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Warning. What you are about to hear contains explicit language, adult themes, and potentially disturbing content. The views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the opinions of anyone else, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. This podcast is intended for an immature audience and should not be listened to by anyone, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. You know, fuck it. You've been warned. Hello, welcome to the very last episode of Geek Pod for 2022. Guys, I'm your host, Paul. I almost I'm fucked Hugh. that off. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but I'm Corbs. I'm Jack. Fuck you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Guys, what's got you geeked? Well, I am geeked about something I got for Christmas. Um, and I will show it to you. This doesn't look like much, but what this is, is it's a JSOX um, Steam Deck dock. Now, this thing has uh, two USB, a uh, HDMI power, of course, for the device, and uh, it's got an Ethernet port. And basically, when I hook this up uh, to my monitor, I it turns my Steam Deck into like a computer interface, and both in the Steam OS, and if I switch to desktop, then it's a lot like a desktop computer. And uh, I have been using it nonstop uh, for what I'll talk about in the gaming segment. But it's just, it, it, it's not that I couldn't have done any of these things without it, but it required a little tiny Bluetooth keyboard, a Bluetooth mouse, working on a small screen, which is great for gaming, but not when you're trying to do the kind of stuff I've been doing with it. Uh, so th this has been a godsend and took the, the stuff I've been trying to do this week, probably what would have been taking me eight or nine hours to do probably, you know, down to like four just from the ease of use. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Outstanding. Uh, pretty simple. Um, like I said, last week was Christmas. This week's New Year's, which is coming up rather quick. Um, it has me geeked every year, but um, it's still got me geeked. But I would say it's got me geek because I'm not pulling the full, the full geek on it because I host a New Year's party every year. And it just really pisses me off because I sent the invite out a month ago and I get maybes. Yeah, I didn't give you guys an invite, so don't worry about it, Paul. <laughs> and you, Corbs, I'm sorry. And you, Hugh. Um, but no, uh, but yeah, you get maybes. They're like, oh, maybe I'll come. May like, I sent out the invite, and the like, don't you love it when you plan a party? They're like, oh, maybe I'll come, or something like that. But um, I do have, like, got six people confirmed. I'm sure more people will come. But um, I was thinking about what should I get for food. Like, I was thinking, Wegmans had something pretty cool. They had like a sub tray with cookies, um, root platter and veggie platter, but that was like 118 fucking bucks. I was like, fuck you. Like my store manager looked right at me. He's like, yeah, I'm not even doing that. That's too much money. I'm like, all right. So um, just went to Costco, two large pizzas, some dips, um, some beer, some water, some soda. I'm up to like 60 something bucks already, which is not bad already. So I think that's pretty good. But uh, beer pong, flip cup, uh, see, um, just having some fun with some friends, catching up with people. Like, it's hard though when we ha all have jobs now and um, second jobs or just trying to be with family or other other things going on in the world. There's tough things. It's tough to see some people at times. So I have friends that live in like Chicago, Los Angeles, like they're all around the uh, country now. So it's hard to see them. So it'll be nice to get everybody together. And um, just like bust each other's balls for like a couple hours and just have some fun and drinking games and catch up. So New Year's party, I like to do it every year. But like I said, might start doing something a little different next year. But it's fun. Hey, Jack, are you sure you're not getting maybes? Because people are like, yeah, Jack's really cool, but he always cheaps out on the food at his parties. 
<laughs> I should, yeah, maybe it's that. I don't know yet. <laughs> I, but my first year, I spent like over four hundred dollars in food and drinks and all that. So I was like, "Fuck you, everybody." So I'm just trying to scale it down a little bit. But so you spent too much money and said "fuck you" to the people that showed up. Man, I had more people turn out last year, but it was fun though. Like it's BYOB, so it'll be fun a lot. I anyway, I hear what you're saying, but um, I'm gonna make a chicken wing dip. One of my fr- other friends will make a taco dip, so it'll be fine. It'll be fun. Sounds like a good time. Wish we were invited. Yeah. I know. I already got the yelled at from all my doctors and all my coworkers too. So <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? Yes, sir. All right, just making sure I didn't want to like interrupt or anything like that. You're good. Uh, no, for me, it's kind of the same thing as Jack. I mean, it's last year was Christmas, and it's nice with you know getting up together with family and all that stuff and whatnot. But this year, uh, next this week, this coming week, it's New Year's. Um, Kelly and I have a tradition on New Year's we go to a uh, funny bone. For a show, uh, Jesse Mae Paluzzo is, is in town. She was in town last year at this time, uh, so we're going to the show. She's actually doing four shows this year. Last year she only oh, did nice. two. She's doing four. She's doing two on Friday night, two on Saturday night. So uh, we're going Saturday night to the early show on Saturday night. So um, should be fun. Um, yeah, she's Jesse's hysterical. Uh, she's actually from from Syracuse, so which is nice. So uh, she's been on like last, last comic standing and stuff like that. So she's, uh, she's really good. She's, she's very, um, raunchy, which is nice. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great, but it's a great show. We have fun every year. I mean, laugh nonstop. There's, she's got some pretty good, uh, opening acts to some of the guys from the area and stuff like that. So should be a good time. So uh, I'm looking forward to that is I'm now frozen. <laughs> there you are. Hey, Corbs, I got to ask you, um, yeah. because Kelly, a uh, friend, Facebook friended me. I've seen a lot of interesting stuff on her Facebook feed. Have you seen any of that? Like what? I mean, do, do you, are you friends with her on Facebook? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, seems like, my girlfriend on Facebook. Well, well, you never know. Some people keep shit separate. It seems like every single Facebook app is telling her that she is going to get engaged this year. And I was yeah. like, oh man. Yeah. And move into a new house. I keep seeing that too. Yeah, I keep telling her to stop that shit, but it's not happening. <laughs> Where are you sitting for the funny bone, Corbs? Probably one uh, of the seats. I, yeah, I don't know the seats yet. It's a, it's a two, it's a, like a two-person table. Sometimes they share it. Uh, you share the, the seats with somebody else sometimes. Now, They're her show, you probably end up sharing because she sells out. I know. I remember I went to a comedy club with one person from this podcast. I'm not going to mention any names. Oh, but... um. Look back at the previous Geek Pod episodes and um, figure out what happened. But keep going, Corpse. Everybody's uh, like, um, no, I don't fucking care. Well, you know where I'm going with that, but you know. what? The fact that you you have trouble holding your bowels? Oh shit! Kevin Smith would not shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, it's Kevin Smith. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you don't go to one of his shows for him to be expecting him to be succinct. I mean, come on. Five yeah. questions in almost three hours. <laughs> yeah, that was a short show because he had a second one. Go ahead. Sorry, we're stealing your segment. <laughs> look at look how unenthused he looks down there. I know. That should be the picture. That's of because your he's dog. frozen. <laughs> my screen, my entire screen is frozen. So, yeah, you're frozen on ours too, but it's perfect. I, I, do it. I might have to add in some like effects on you. <laughs> you, you how, how you feel about a cowboy hat, Corbs? Well, after <laughs> I've been watching, I, I, uh, well, I'll get into that when we get into what we're what I'm streaming. So, all right. All right. I uh right up until we we got together tonight, I didn't have anything that had me gig because this is not my time of the year, especially this year. But then I came across something that really actually has me excited. I'm not gonna lie. Um all I can say is the disease is spreading, boys. You better say more than that. Oh no, I'm done for the night. Just uh <laughs> I checked our downloads through um our our audio our Podbean, and um we're 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 blowing up in in other parts of the world, my friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've we've got downloads in Brazil, Spain, South Africa, uh, Iraq, and damn near double digits in the United Kingdom. 
Now, United Kingdom, would that include like Scotland? Or is uh, that separated? Chip, chip. Let, let's see if it is. Uh, South Africa and Scotland is my buddy Seb. Hi, Seb. I don't, I don't, uh, we also have, um, 11 downloads unknown. Well, you know, I was going to bring this up off mic, but I might as well say it now since it makes sense. Uh, Seb is a guy I work with, uh, from South Africa, uh, him and his wife just moved to Scotland, like in the past week. And, um, he's going to be leaving Rev, uh, but he's like the, the other Star Trek fan. I know he's a really cool guy. Um, awesome beard. And can talk about anything. He's usually the life of any social we we have. And he's been listening to the show. I think I might have mentioned he started from you the did. beginning. Uh, well, somebody him, else. Sorry. Uh, somebody else started from the beginning, too. Oh, nice. Well, what I told him, and he, not right now, because uh, get this. they Their shit isn't going to be delivered to them. It's in a shipping container until February or March. Yeah. Um, but I told him, you know, once he gets settled, I said, hey, I want to have you on the show because, first of all, he'd be hilarious. And you know what he said? He was like, that would be absolutely fucking lutely unbelievable. And he's honored. I mean, he clearly hasn't listened enough. Yeah. Right. He hasn't uh, gotten that far into the yeah, show. And he's not going to hear this because he refuses to listen to them out of order. Um, but I think I think he'd be hilarious. We'd have to work it out time zone. Well, it's going to be in the middle of the night for him. But I, I think uh, I think he'll dig it. Outstanding, and, he, and he's not going to uh, cause any issues like Andrew did. Oh, well, good. for one, he's uh, he's on the other side of the world, so it's hard for him to cause those kind of issues. Yeah. Um, well, well, like okay, that's interesting. Hours, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> not after dark with Seb. <laughs> well, no, I we we still recorded our normal time. It's just going to be a late night for him, but uh, <laughs> but he seems really excited about it and uh, outstanding. When you say the numbers, Paul, like you say Brazil, is there a number next to it? Iraq, there's a number next to it? Or yep. What do you got for numbers? Some. I don't, so. don't want to make it sound less exciting than it is. Okay. But it's just nice. Well, to you see. just did. It's it's uh, it's just exciting to see that in other parts of the world, people are actually finding us. Problem is, is anybody listening just... to us in the U.S.? Focus. Yes. The, those Our biggest numbers are in the U.S. So are they playing Geek Pod in Iraq for like torture? <laughs> Wait, where's Guantanamo? <laughs> <laughs> Cannibal Dookie or no, no, what's it? A cock meat sandwich. <laughs> don't even know what you're talking about right now. Harold Kumar too, he has a cock meat sandwich. Okay, that's why I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen that one. Oh, that's so good. <clears throat> um, but I guess uh let's move it right along. Uh guys, welcome to the players club. What are you playing? Well, this is why I desperately needed that J Sox deck so bad. Um, I have gotten back into Skyrim. Oh, and you, you I, mentioned I, last week that you were trying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and I have now successfully modded Skyrim um, fairly heavily. I'm still running into some roadblocks, but I'm having a blast because I've, I've determined that you know it seems to me whether it's the Steam Deck or the Raspberry Pi, I got. I, I seem to enjoy tinkering more than I actually do playing the games. I, I don't know why that is, um, but I've spent the, the every day I've been going on and uh, kind of playing around with mods, trying to achieve what I'm looking to achieve. Um, have run into a roadblock today. I spent about four hours and, and got nowhere with a uh, with something I was trying to do, but I'm still enjoying it and it it plays and looks great on the deck. Of course, you'd expect it to, but I, I don't know if you guys ever played Skyrim, but it mm -hmm. is one of those games. Okay, it, it's one of those games that is always good 10 years later five years later whatever it's always still good and when you're able to mod it that makes it even better i'm looking forward with with all of the stuff that's come out now i'm looking forward to a good two or three hundred hour playthrough nice. once once i get this set up the way i want right now i'm they have something called true directional movement which updates the uh, third person movement so it's kind of like the assassin's creed games where you know if you go back your character goes back instead of because remember the, the the third person view used to be it was just the first person camera you know when you're playing in first person you have to turn with a joystick yeah. well the third person just put the character in front of you but the controls were all still the same um that was fine 11 years ago but things have progressed since then and uh I cannot get this thing to work. Um, well, I think it's partially working. The movement's working. I cannot get it to lock on. I can't lock on to any enemies, which is a huge pain in the ass. But uh, I'm still fighting through it. We'll see where I end up. Outstanding. I uh, I have had no time this week to to play any games. I uh, it just hasn't happened. Uh, well, I've I mean, you were to... trying to play one yesterday. 
were we playing yesterday? You messaged saying, you know, high on life was a Xbox. Exclusive. Oh yes, yes, yes. I was looking into it. Yeah. I, did, I was, did you, yeah. uh, are you going to take my advice on that? Uh, not yet. No. Okay. So, so here's the deal, dude. Um, you can get a game, a game pass subscription, like a three month trial for like a buck or something like that. It's stupid. It, it's, it's no money at all. Um, when you do that, you have the option of either downloading games. And if you download them, then you either have to have an Xbox or a PC, um, that will play them because uh, they do have PC games on there. But there's mm -hmm. also streaming for just about everything on there. I think I'm streaming high on life. Uh, the only thing is you will need a controller. You absolutely right. can use a PS5 controller. Um, you'd have to plug it directly in. And I think I think the PS5 controllers, that everything, everything's smart enough now that you don't have to do anything. But if you do, at least for the PS4, you needed a program. I believe it was called X Input, which would basically tell your computer what to do with a, a PlayStation controller. Uh, I, I think we're past that now. Uh, but it, it's super simple. You've got everything you need. It's going to cost you like a buck. You want to play high on life, do that. And just you know cancel it at the end. Or you might be like, wow, all of these games that I can just stream to my computer, fuck it, I'll keep it. And now, if you do the streaming thing, I think you talked about this before, that really doesn't rely on your hardware and your computer. No, not okay. at all. You can, I mean, you can you can do it to your phone. You can Bluetooth a controller to your phone, and you can stream Game Pass on your phone. Nice. Yeah, uh, and and I've not really noticed any any difference, any input lag, anything like that. I mean, I have decent internet, but I think you do too. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that'll be an issue for you. I mean, the technology's really come a long way. And, and really, Game Pass is as much of a PlayStation fan as I am. Game Pass is the best deal in gaming going right now because even past your trial, 15 bucks, and you can play pretty much anything you want. Nice. Definitely something I'll look into, uh, especially with the, the okay. streaming option because that, that was my big concern is I don't know if my laptop has enough balls to handle real yeah. modern-day oh, games. And so. Fight Forever is a day one, uh, day one uh, Game Pass game. That's so awesome. that, that means that it'll be, I mean, while it'll still be on the PlayStation, you'll have to buy it. It'll be free on Game Pass. Right. Well, apparently I, it's it's already pre-ordered for me. I'm just, we're waiting for it to come in. Well, you're <laughs> waiting for it to be released. Yeah. That's, Kristen yeah. ordered Kristen. it for me for Christmas. And I said something about it, miss, it being missing off my Amazon list after Christmas because I have other things that are, are missing because they haven't made it here yet. And she goes, oh, shit, that's right. I bought that for you. I said, well, uh, it's not out yet. <laughs> so I think they're saying February, March now. They're they're well, tentatively saying. You know what? She knows you well enough to know that that's something you'd want. So yes. she went and bought it for you. That's yes. not, that's that's You don't have to worry about it. You're going to have it on day one anyway. Yeah. So I'm excited about that as well. And. Honestly, I mean, it's not something I need right now because we all know that I'm going to flip flop games, you know, every couple weeks until then, anyway. So, <clears throat> but Jack, you got anything you're playing or? Actually, you made me think of something. So, like for my New Year's party, I wanted to do something special this year. Like we all play the like, occasional drinking games. One of my friends actually has a wheel that you can spin. Like, like, like they have the wheel of shots and all that. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna borrow my brother, my, no, my buddy's um Oculus set. Nice. So uh, we're going to like put all the songs in a hat and then we're going to do Beat Saber, like a duels or something like that. So spin the wheel, whatever song you get, we'll have 12, 12 songs on the wheel. And then if you have the higher score, you're safe for the next round. It's like King of the Ring tournament style. But if you lose, nice. you try to drink. So I think um, I was thinking that would be kind of a fun thing to do, get people involved with it. Have Let It Go to Chop Suey to 1985 to... How, how does your friend feel about drunk people using their Oculus? Because I'd be a little concerned. <laughs> he'll be drunk too, so he'll he'll be fine. But I know what you're actually saying. You're right. I think we'll make sure everybody gives each other enough space, but we'll have fun doing it. But no, you're absolutely right. Like I was actually looking at buying one myself, just splurge buying. I'm like, you know what? I want to buy one. And I was like, oh, I don't have $400 right now. Just chilling to buy it. Right, but I hear that. I think that would be a fun drinking game. Like, we, you always play the casual beer pong or flip cup, but I was like, spin the wheel of Beat Saber or something like that. I don't know what you would call it, but something like that would be kind of cool. Outstanding. Well, all right. Well, Corbs is still rebooting, and um, we don't have a uh, a Kev tonight. He's, uh, he, he's off on holiday for uh, the holiday. And uh, so I think we'll uh, we'll just throw it to commercial. We'll come back. And get right into the news. 
Stick with us, guys. Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. Before you get all excited about the new year, just think back to all the hope we had for 2022. And that was another dumpster fire. And not any old dumpster fire. Like the dismembered bodies of every hooker with a heart of gold, all of our positive thoughts for change, and the entire cast of the Smurfs brought to life, murdered, and thrown in the dumpster. Then set on fire with Old Spice cologne and a seedy hotel matchbook. That kind of dumpster fire. Sorry to burst your bubble, guys. First up, New Year fake you. So that congressman-elect George Santos, who was accused of lying about his past, he admitted to it. And what I'm sure is going to become a new election rule, you can now lie about your history as well as your policies. Not only did he say he went to universities he never attended and worked for companies like Goldman Sachs, who have no record of him, he also said his grandparents survived the Holocaust and he was Jewish to get the Jewish vote. His grandparents were born and lived in Brazil, the home of Big Butts. The response from his peers is about as expected. The Democrats calling for him not to be seated and the Republicans saying he should be seated and prove himself through his record in Congress. They, of course, aren't mentioning that these lies may have swayed voters in choosing him as their candidate to begin with. In a world where every election is apparently fraudulent, when we find actual fraud, guess who isn't really in a hurry to do anything about it? So guess what? I'm running for president. I personally killed Hitler and Stalin. I graduated from Harvard, and I got a 47,000 on my SATs. What? You say I'm lying? You must like Hitler. Anyone who disagrees with me is a Nazi. Heil Bratwurst or something. Next up, toss a coin to your garbage man. I hate to say this, but... The Witcher blood origin is trash. While the 8% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, even lower than Netflix Resident Evil at 28%, could be being influenced by the incel inside brigade who hate black people and strong women in their pretend TV shows, I can personally attest to how awful this show is. If it was on the CW, I would say it lands between Batwoman and the Charmed reboot. Now, Anyone who knows me knows I don't hate inclusively inclusivity or any of the things the go woke, go broke crowd natter on about. What I do hate is lazy writing. Too often we have our heroes walking somewhere and we see them from behind, but voiceovers are explaining what they're planning to do. It's ridiculously obvious they had to record a bunch of VO because they did not tell the story well. I've never even caught that in a show or movie, let alone over and over again. This means the majority of what they wrote and filmed does not coherently explain the story to the viewer. Everything also moves a bit too fast and doesn't really feel earned at all. Characters being so upset about someone I think they met like yesterday, or at least that's what it felt like, and just randomly running into new party members rather than encountering them as part of the story. Oh, hi, thief that just showed up. Want to join us? Oh, hey, dwarf that the audience has been following separately who just showed up here in the woods on our path. Want to kill an empress? It feels like a low-budget direct-to-DVD Dungeons & Dragons film. Which is fine for a low-budget, direct-to-DVD Dungeons & Dragons film. How you fuck up Michelle Yeoh and your cast is beyond me. And finally, there is nothing else. No, really, that's it. Have you looked at the news this week? The week between Christmas and New Year's is a black hole of best-of articles and made-up bullshit, like producers of Smallville talk about what they would do in a revived series. Not an actual news item that anyone's considering bringing Smallville back, just conjecture on something that will never happen. These kinds of articles are easy because they're copy-and-paste jobs from previous articles. They cover tired and run-down topics no one even cares about anymore. 
kind of like the Geek Pod Christmas episodes. This is the one week a year everyone is supposed to be spending time with their family, so not a single news outlet really tries. Perfect time to break a story about someone who lied about everything to get elected. And that's the news, kids. Now, go play with your Christmas presents, eat some unhealthy food, enjoy the friends, family, and whomever ends up in your orbit during the holiday season. Next week, it's back to the grind. And for those already back at work, unless you're in retail or food, come on. Half the office is gone and no one's actually doing anything. It's a lazy week. Recharge, regroup, and get ready for whatever dumb shit Elon Musk, Kanye, or Lowen Bobart are going to spout in 2023. Speaking of Bobart, did you know that she was the stunt double for the number two pencil that wrote the line, A Golden Bird That Flies Away, A Candle's Fickle, fickle Flame, from the Cake song Never There and the upcoming biopic Cake, Eat It Too, possibly coming to Hulu this year? Or not? See how stupid life is when you can make any claims you want? She's obviously underqualified for that role anyway. Paul? In other news, each year, it is estimated that 80% of New Year's resolutions are abandoned by February. Back to you, Corbs. That's too long. <laughs> Mine's abandoned by December suck or January 2nd. <laughs> you give it a good try. I give it to college try. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in the world of sports? Very little. That's all I got. <laughs> Seriously, I need time to eat my snack. What the fuck? Nah, that's all right. I got some stuff. Um, so, issues in their first bowl since 2018. Uh, season started out great for the football team. Started out 6-0. and uh, Finished 7-5. and Yeah, not so great. Uh, but, did get bowl eligible which is good for them, good for Dino. Um, lost a couple guys to the transfer portal before the bowl. So, and as a matter of fact, you lost your top two cornerbacks, so that'll be fun. <clears throat> so, uh, but, yeah, it's first time since 2008. They've won their last four bowl games. Or, I'm sorry, 2018, not 2008, 2018. But won their last four, so going for a five in a row uh, on Thursday, the 29th. So, I'm assuming the episode from – Yesterday, <laughs> from Thursday. Yeah, there you go. Um, I mean, I mean, other than that, there's, uh, I don't know, Jack, I don't know how much you follow basketball, like NBA basketball. Are you going to bring up what Luca did last night? Yeah, Luca, uh, first ever triple double, 60 points, 20, so 20, 20 rebounds or 10, 20 assists and 10 rebounds, something like that. First 20 60, rebounds, 10 assists. Yeah, uh-huh. first 60, 20, 10. Um, he, he right now, hands down, is the best player in the NBA. He can pretty much do whatever he wants, however he wants. Um, doesn't know that the team he plays on isn't that great, but I mean, if he's scoring 60 points, and he won, he scored 60 points, I think that won by in overtime. So that tells you kind of they scored 100 and let's say 130, and he scored 60 of them. So I mean, when you're scoring half the points for your team, that kind of uh tells you where your team is at. Um, going back to college football, you got the college football playoffs. Um, I think Saturday, I think it's Saturday is the first round. They do two rounds now, one plays four, two plays three, and then the winners play the following Monday. So the winners would play on January 9th. So you got, uh, so Georgia versus Ohio State. I think that's the first game, and then it's TCU and Jack helped me out with the other team. I wish Michigan, I could. Michigan, yeah, Michigan, TCU, and it's Georgia versus um, Ohio State. So those are those are the two games that are on Saturday, and then the following Monday, so the ninth, will be the championship game. The two winners play in that game. So other than that, there's not really too much going on. I mean, like he says, it's kind of that in between stage of of all that stuff. Even with sports, I mean, you, you, I mean, it's really there's really no football plays, but I mean. It's football. They're getting. They're winding down. Mm-hmm. Season's just about over. They got two weeks to go. Um, Paul, I, I hate to say it, but your Raiders watched that game on Saturday night. Yeah, I heard that was an epic. It wasn't. It wasn't pretty, man. Failure. And that's, and that's yeah. where their season's gone. I mean, they're they're four and ten. They could actually be ten and four. I think they've lost six games by a total of twelve points. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's bad. 
Yeah. Why don't you bring up what happened with the Raiders just recently, just like a couple hours ago? That was pretty big news. Oh, did they fire Josh McDaniels? No, they benched Derek Carr. And Derek oh, I, didn't even, what? I didn't even know that. Derek Carr is taking a leave of absence because he's the number two now. So look for him to get traded in the offseason, I would say. That's huge. Yeah, that, that's huge. stupid. So, but yeah, oh. Derek yeah, Derek Carr did not want to be benched. They they got that Devontae Adams, his college buddy, to play with them. And now yeah. the Raiders can't fire Josh McDaniels because then they'll, they'll owe him money. There's so much in debt right now, the Raiders. But keep going. Yeah. No, no, I didn't, <laughs> Is this I didn't a good know player? Him. Because... Yeah, why he's are good, they benching him? Because he's having a bad season. He's leading the inter, league in interceptions, but it's not his fault. It's like what uh, Corb said. They've lost um, a lot of their games by a combine of twelve points. They can easily be having a winning record. Yeah, but I, I watched some of that game on Saturday, and it, I don't think it was the, the game went pretty much was his fault. Uh, it was windy in, in Pittsburgh. Um, a lot of the throws that he he had were high, overthrown. But so did the, the quarterback from Pittsburgh. He had, but Carr had three interceptions in the, I think, in the fourth quarter alone. Um, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't pretty. It really wasn't. And they were winning all along, and then he threw three interceptions, and they lost. So, um, I get, I get the benching. You got to do something different. You got to see different. see if something else is going to work. Exactly. Yeah. You got to try to get a spark right now. You got to see what you've got. You're right, Jack. He he will end up being traded in the offseason or released or one of the two. But he'll sign on someplace else. He'll 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 get traded. He'll end up someplace, Carolina, someplace like that. You know, I, I know. just disagree though. I see what you're saying. You got to see what's going on. But no, I I wouldn't bench Derek Carr. Like the guy cried in a press conference. The guy's the heart and soul of the team. Oh, no, he, I don't, he, don't get wrong. He's the heart and soul of that team. But it's not working right now. So you got to try something different, even if it is for the last few games. Even if it is, you give him a chance to to go away, get his head cleared. Whatever might, there might be something going on off the field that we don't know about. True. Maybe he's got maybe he's got issues off the field. Maybe he's, you know, he's a, uh, he's drinking or whatever off the field to to cope with whatever's going on. You don't know that maybe there's a there's another issue that he's got going on. That's why they're giving him a chance to step away. Saying maybe. you know what, you know what, maybe take the last two games, take them off, just forget about football for the rest of the for the rest of this time. Come back in after the Super Bowl. We'll re we'll, we'll reassess. See where you see where you are. See where you stand. Do you want? Do we want to continue on? It, it, I think it'll be a mutual thing. If he leaves, it'll be a mutual thing. I think. I almost think he's got to go. You've got to he try. Does. He's got to go someplace in the off season. Uh, he's got to go someplace different. Um, maybe he goes to Seattle and and, and is the starter there or whatever. Something something like that. You know. I mean. He, he won't be a Raider next year because um, if he is a Raider, he's guaranteed forty million dollars. Oh, then he, yeah, he'll definitely, yeah, he'll definitely so, be gone. Yeah. But he won't go to Seattle because Geno Smith will win Comeback Player of the Year. So we'll talk about that in another segment. But yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. But I mean, do you think Geno Smith is the the answer there? No. I don't either. Maybe he goes up there and sits behind him for for a year, or sits behind him for six games, and when Geno falters or whatever. He he goes there with Pete Carroll. Maybe he that's what he needs or something. You know what I mean? He's maybe. gonna go someplace. He's gonna have to. He, he's gonna have to humble, humble himself. He's gonna have to go someplace and sit behind somebody. Unless he goes to someplace like the Texans, where he can go and just step in and be a starter. If he goes to the Texans, he's gonna end up like his brother, and he's gonna end up on his ass the entire time. He's the most sack quarterback in the league. His brother was right, and I think if he goes to Houston, Houston, they'll be one and two. But um, it's funny, though, how Devontae Smith, though, who plays for the Raiders, he played with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, and he's like, I had the best quarterback. Now he goes to the Raiders to be with his best friend. Then Derek Carr's going to leave. He, he's probably, like, throwing shit in his house right now. He's like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Right. I'm going to play with somebody new again. Right. So, yeah. now, I, they may even just cut that whole team. They may trade Devontae Smith, too. Or Devontae Adams, not Smith. Smith's in Philadelphia. He's Philly. Yeah. yeah you, you, may, you, you may actually see them both get traded. Just break up everything. The only, the only person, the only person I think they keep is Jacobs, Josh Jacobs. He's the running, the running back there. They keep him, and I think they just got the team offensively. Defensive team, the defense is okay. They they need some help in the secondary. The offensive line is, is or the defense line is stacked. Linebackers are, are decent. Um, I think I think that they're gonna I think they're gonna gut the offense. I think Waller's gone. I think Adams is gone, and I think Carr is gone. I think the three of them are all gonna be traded in the offseason so 
I think you should take a leave of absence from Geek Pod 2023 general manager of the Las Vegas Raiders, Sean Corbett. I think it has a nice ring to it. I'm down. Can you get right. some tickets? <laughs> no. Or at least airfare? No, no. no. Airfare I mean, if, I'm the, if, I'm the, if I'm the GM there, I, I, I can't show favoritism right off the bat. The I first mean, thing I have... he needs to be here bringing football people to our our show. The first thing you oh. do know is GM, though, you don't make the cuts, you don't make the trades, you get pancakes as concessions. And yeah. hear me out. Change the colors <laughs> to lime green and black. <laughs> no, no, nothing will be the GM there anymore. Right. They will, they will, they will they literally hang like... me in the parking lot. <laughs> So, but yeah, Jack, I I did not see that about Derek Carr. Like you said, it just happened just in the in the past couple of hours. So no, I haven't been on. Um, so, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So, are we sure they're not just sending him out to finally get something done with those fucking eyebrows? Are they bad? I really haven't thought about it. Is it oh are they going to get threaded? He needs to. Or weed whacked. Does he have like a unibrow? Is of Eugene Levy caterpillars? <laughs> no, they're just like the fucking Oscar the Grouch fucking giant squares, if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, could be. That might be. That maybe when, maybe when he puts his helmet on, they get his eyes and he can't see. <laughs> that's fair. I have to look at it. I never thought about it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, all right. Like I said, not much going on. So. Well, then let's move it right along to Jack's erroneous. Question of the week. He's got dos. 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 Um, translate old Lane Zine. No. no. Yes. Is that really your question? <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> You're like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> he was like, fuck you. No, I'm at- Bite me. No. Um. <laughs> yeah, you know what? When I was looking up the thing for the freaking and other news too, I, this came across and I didn't even pay attention to it. Um. When you at the end of the news segment with the Hugh, I was looking at that question too. What you said about eighty percent. I was going to do that one too. Something like that. Um. It means um. Happy old, New old, Year. Old Lang. No. What What is it again? Old, old Lang, Lang Zine. Yep. A U L D L A N G S Y N E. I'll send these to you when we're done with the podcast, Paul. He's typing now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How I about? No, I, got, I, got, I got no idea. I'm not even going to take right. a shot. Oh, all right. I'll give you a hint. This will probably give it away, but think of a clock. Tick, 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 tick. Time's up. Time is the first word. And then time. time to just give us the answer because we don't know. <laughs> time stands still. That was my guess too, but it's not. No. Time, time go- marches what? on. Kind of. Time goes by. Okay. 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 What food do people in the southern United States often eat for good luck on New Year's Eve? Olives. No, but close. Oysters. No. What food? Close to olives. So close to olives? Pimento loaf? (laughs) No. Think of a musical group. Black Eyed Peas? Yeah. (laughs) There you go, Corbs. Okay. Okay. Um, The olives thing was come because my next door neighbors, it must be an Italian thing. Uh, At midnight, they have to like house like seven olives and do like this whole ritual dance and that weird jumping like spinning kick from street fighter 2 that sounds and like a cult th- they could seriously. be seriously and it doesn't, sound, doesn't sound like anything italian it sounds like it sounds kind of cultish well and also people from spain or like um so- south america they do the 12 grapes or something like that too that's another one for good luck I don't huh? know. i'm tra- i'm i'm traditional I, I drink. That's oh, I what I do. You do the, yeah, the, the American tradition is to drink until you uh, <clears throat> make a bad mistake and wake up next to somebody you don't know. Okay, I haven't really gotten that far. I've been there. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I've been there too. You got to remember, there was some there was some years in the twenties I don't remember. So <laughs> perfect. All right, uh, let's keep this thing moving. I'm going to give you guys my weekly topic. Ray, <clears throat> what is a New Year's resolution that you've actually kept? <laughs> This is going to be a short segment. <laughs> I figured. Wow. <laughs> All right. We'll give those answers when we return. Stick with us, guys. Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. sound means it's time for the weekly topic <clears throat> let me reiterate what is a new year's resolution that you actually kept kind of question you by by you mean kept like you just all year long or are we still working on it i mean yes i guess did okay. you say by kept or did you say by catholic <laughs> definitely not catholic <laughs> No. Um... Oh shit! I don't have my background up. Why didn't anyone say anything? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, no. Um, actually, I'm proud of this one. It's uh, what I've been saying all along. I've, I'm on my first house, and I worked hard to buy a house. I did it all alone. I had nobody help me really. Like nobody gave me like my parents didn't give me loans, which they shouldn't. Um, I did the first one buyers club classes. I never bought it with somebody. I financed it myself. Um, just just being able to buy my own house. I'm proud of that, basically. Short and sweet. That was a New Year's resolution? That's something you said, like, six years ago? I wanted to buy a house, yeah. So, like, I've always wanted, <laughs> and I lost out on, like, five different houses because, like, people outbid you or do the cash offers. And the house I'm in now, over five years now, but it was a goal of mine to have my own house. I always made that a resolution for a couple of years and finally got it. Nice. Okay. Well, I can say I have never made a New Year's resolution in my life so i've never kept one but you've also never failed at one that's sure. right so i have a better track record than any of you motherfuckers <laughs> probably anyone else in the planet <laughs> probably yeah. you've sure. had a thousand <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't know i mean i can't remember back you know when i was younger or whatever so I mean, I, to be honest with you, every year you're like, oh, I'm going to make myself a better person, better person. And by mid-January, you're the same fucker as always. So, <laughs> that's Well, yeah, that was kind of my thing. I when, when I was young, I didn't even understand it. And by the time I was old enough to actually make a contract with myself, I realized it was pointless and I was never going to succeed. So why start now? That's what I say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the same person I was last year. I'm going to be the same douchebag I was. Well, see, that, that doesn't mean that you have to go out of your way to not change. You just don't lie to yourself that you're magically going to change starting on January 1st. I mean, I've made lots of changes in my life and stuck with them, but they were never precipitated by a New Year's New Year's resolution. By a ball dropping. Yeah. 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 Ball yeah. drop all the time. 
<laughs> that's good. You know, that's only supposed to happen once, like the big one. And the then... descent, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, the big I, one. <laughs> I dropped these nuts. <laughs> um mine was and it's it was a big cop out was to drive safer and literally all that meant was like when my kids were born i slowed down literally like why why you know responsibility that's about it and by slow down i don't mean like the speed limit i mean not 97 miles an hour anymore <laughs> so that is literally the only thing i think i've ever actually kept so, but that's when they're not in the car, though, right? 97? Yeah. Yeah. That's... Okay. That's right. Okay. <laughs> on, the back, on the way back from Belago. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to catch up to you, but you were gone. <laughs> but you would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can leave now? See you. <laughs> I, I, I saw the, the, the lightning bolts and the smoke on there. <laughs> that's what back in, back in time. <laughs> 1985. <laughs> <laughs> all right um so now that we're making back to the future references guys what are you watching unfortunately witcher blood origin um any witcher fans here no i saw the first right. season about it <laughs> I, I mean the main show is fantastic um if you watch the main show you kind of got to watch this i mean it's not a complete waste of time but it's not nearly on the level as the main sh or the main show the main show is on the level of like an hbo drama it's really good um this is not really good um the only other show because there's not a whole hell of a lot on right now you know besides our, our epic rewatch of supernatural um we have been watching uh the final season of uh, his dark materials uh which is hbo i believe um I mean that my wife loved the books, so that's why we're watching it. Uh, it's good. I can't complain anything about it. Never read the books. I, I don't know how accurate they are, but it's a good show. Uh, a little weird, but um, weird in a good way. I do, however, want to watch Peacock's uh, Ric Flair documentary that dropped this week. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. Yeah, same here. I might get to it tonight after this. Um, boys. Okay. Well, I would say uh, still watching Tulsa King. The show's still great. I, I like Stallone for sure. The, there was like two big things that happened in the episode, which probably was going to happen eventually. But like it was like finally it happened, which was really cool. Um, and then I think, Paul, you watched it uh, with my family. We watched the Christmas Story Christmas. Yes. Uh, that was actually, was it great? No. Was it bad? No. But it was, um, it actually paid a lot of, uh, similarities to the original. I thought it was actually pretty well done. Like, yes, you didn't have the original mom in it, but you had the mom that's been a lot of the movies that we've seen over the years. She's sad. Right. She was great. Was that is that the chick from Airplane? Yes. Yes, okay. that's her. I thought I spent yeah. half the movie going. Yeah. She, she's also in What About Bob? She's also in Just Friends. Uh, she's a great actress, but like the Peter Billingsley was great. It was nice seeing um, all the characters all again. All the kids came back. I was really hoping, though, during the scene where Flick dared um, his the other, uh, I forget his Schwartz. name. Schwartz. Schwartz. Okay. I was really hoping when they went outside, it's a little thing, but Schwartz still had that long hat. <laughs> He's still the same size. He's not grown. But um, it was cool seeing, like, but Scott was turned to be good and all that stuff, so that was kind of Oh, scary. wow, spoilers. Okay. Well, he's well, only been out for a month. <laughs> well, are we going to watch it after Christmas? All right, well. Oh. Um, so my take on it, like, um, that was the big thing for us for the Christmas Eve box. I had waited because we just got HBO Max back, like we said. And that was a huge thing because I love the original. Love Christmas Story. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, I think this is common now, so I'm not ruining it for anybody. We sit down to watch it. We're doing the whole thing. And you get five minutes into it. They're laying the story out. The old man and mother are coming to Chicago for Christmas to do a big city Christmas with Ralphie. Well, phone rings. He's on the phone, and you know it's a very serious phone call. And the context starts dropping for you. And right out of my mouth says, oh, are you fucking kidding me? Oh. Because the old man dies suddenly. I'm like, really? <laughs> like every fucking movie now. Um, and Kristen goes, like, I didn't even look at her. I'm still watching the movie. And all of a sudden I hear from the other end of the couch, do you want to keep watching it? 
<laughs> I was like, yes, we're we're watching this movie. Um, but uh, I think that was paid homage to the fact that the the guy that played the old man did pass away not too he long did. ago, right? 2016. Was it day. okay? That's a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that sets everything in motion for the movie. Like now, Ralph and his family have to go back home. You know, to be there with mom and everything, and and then the shit unfurls from there. And like Jack said, it's it's not great. It it's not a Christmas story, but it's a worthy successor. It was good. It was fun. It's it's it almost made me feel the same way that Clerks Two made me feel that you're catching up with old friends. What was so. really cool about it, um, the casseroles that they had. If you, I, I looked this up <laughs> after. If you look at the name of the casseroles, it's the name of production people on the movie. So oh my god, they, is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's, so awesome. that's what they did. Because Peter Billingsley and Vince Vaughn are good friends. And oh, uh, wow. Vince Vaughn over the years was like, hey, uh, you have to do this movie. He's like, I don't want to do it. He's like, well, they have their own production company, and that's how they got off the ground, this movie. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. But um, you liked it, though, you said? like it I did like it. I enjoyed it. I uh, actually was a little bit of an argument at Christmas Day because Kristen's brother insisted it sucked. It was a horrible movie, and I took offense to that, and we kind of <laughs> got into it a little bit. Yeah, the, the casseroles what? and the Christmas carolers were probably the best parts. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and she's like, "Get to, I, I want to, but it's just so, and she, oh, I can't, so, but you know where I'm going with this. Yes. Like she, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, oh, and uh, Ralphie got a wife that was way too hot for him. He's got to say, yeah. But those yeah. poor he definitely kids. punched up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you watching anything, Corbs? Uh, yeah, actually, I uh, I did subscribe to Paramount. Ooh. Last night. So are you last watching night. the uh, the Yellowstone spinoffs? Well, I, I I started that tonight. Um, Which one? Nineteen. Eighteen eighty three. How fucking many of those do there need to There's be? There's two now. Eighteen eighty three and nineteen twenty three. Yep. Yeah, I started watching. Uh, so I actually. I, I signed up for it yesterday. Uh, I watched Fire Country, which is a, a, a new show on CBS. So I watched that. Um, I'd seen a couple episodes like in the middle, so I wanted to go back and I watched the first the pilot and episode two. I'd seen episode three and four. So I watched one and two, and then I watched like, I think I watched like five episodes yesterday of it. Hour-long episodes, but I watched it. It's a great show. Um it's got the guy from SEAL Team in it, uh, Max Theriot. He's in it. He's a uh, he's the main character, main actor in it. Um, but it's 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 a good show. It's about a it's about a guy who's uh, a convict, and in California, the the convicts work the fire crews, the fire lines. For, yeah, yeah. For for reduced sentence. Mm-hmm. So th- this the his character's name is is Bodie. He actually goes back to his hometown. Now, he left his hometown for a reason, and they explained the reason in the first couple episodes. Uh, so he has to, he was he wanted to go to a different city to work the fire crew, but they ended up sending him to his hometown. So he runs into his mom, runs into his dad, runs into his former best friend, another like her, his sister or something like that. They're all like, everybody's friends. So he's there as a convict, and these guys are all there working the in the fire in the fire crew and now he's working the convict side of it they're working the regular fire department side of it so um, that dynamic is is pretty cool um but it's a good show it's on hiatus right now um until after until next year by next year i mean next week um but yeah it's a good show and then i started watching 1883 i watched the first three episodes of that i saw the first episode when it played after yellowstone last year Mm-hmm. I watched the first episode, so I was able to kind of skip through that. But I watched two and three before the show tonight. So nice. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up watching just twelve episodes of that, and then I, 1923 is the one after that. So I'll probably end up watching that um, at some point. So I do want to uh, talk Tulsa King with you when you watch that course because yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna watch that too. There's a couple of shows on there that I wanna. That's I wanna Paramount. Yep, Paramount. Yep, and then there's another one I want to watch called The Offer. I want to watch that too. That's about how the Godfather got made. Oh, nice! So I'm looking forward that. to that one too. So, all right. So the uh, that, for me, 
The only other thing that I've watched is uh, last night we uh, went as a family to see uh, Avatar, The Way of Water. Yeah. Um. Good. Good. Not not great. Not as good as the first one, but good. Um, fleshed out story. I I, I expected a, a lot of like rehash of the first one, and n- not completely. But there, there's some stuff, and and they start right off with it, like, and you're just like, oh, okay. Um, but very, very clearly leaves it for the next sequel. And then I got curious, so I Googled. Um, they already have five Avatar movies locked in. Yeah. With release dates and shit already. Apparently, Avatar three, the first cut of the film has already been turned into the studio. Yeah, yeah they, they film it's simultaneously. simultaneously. It's in post production right now. Yeah, they're talking about it being released sometime. Twenty twenty four. This, this just shows that he actually can get his shit together and make these movies when he wants to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it just announced today too, Paul, um, for Avatar because I'm like that with you. Good. Um, it just passed one billion dollars. It's grossed. Yeah, it's it's insane the amount of money that this thing is making. So that's how well, I feel too. Not great, not bad, but good. But I was in the minority because everybody else in the group said it was as good, if not better, than the original. No, wow. I still do original. Kristen said that. My mom said it. The kids, Madison gives every movie a standing ovation at the end. So, I'm, so. Just, I'm just saying, when the first one came out, it was groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. The whole movie itself was groundbreaking. Now you're just rehashing old things. Right. This is more of the same. Right. Yes. The visual at the time, the first one was fantastic. I mean, you'd never see anything like that as far as the movie itself went. But now it's kind of like, okay, well, what have you done for me lately? The visual effects were pretty spectacular. I'm not gonna lie, but I still. Yeah. But the plot was, eh, yeah. It had a good plot, but it also had a lot of the. Yeah, that you we can don't see that you can see it coming, like all, all really, like like. Yeah. All I gotta say, is spider. Oh yeah. You okay. Totally saw where that was going immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All yeah. I'm hearing is James Cameron hasn't made a good movie since T2. That's a great movie. That is still the best movie he's ever made. I'll put it there for you. So the sequel being an original too. Yes. Uh, but that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything to add to our uh, midstream report, or are we about to? Oh, uh... well, we're done early. Yeah. I'm gonna actually Good, go back and watch the cat AW. just came in here and took a huge shit behind me. It smells <laughs> awful in here. <laughs> I right. the fuck out of this box. <laughs> <laughs> And it wasn't one of the little cats. It was the big boy cat. Oh, naturally. Uh, <laughs> so it's a big boy shit. <laughs> Sounds like the uh, the cat beat me to dropping nuggets. Uh, he did. The cat, the cat definitely dropped his nuggets early. <laughs> dropped his big nuts. <laughs> well, let, let's save you and let, let's get mine out of the way. <clears throat> There's no law saying your New Year's resolution can't be something evil just saying good night everybody and happy new year this has been a geek pod network production